What's going on guys? So I had the chance to go up to Jason's from Jason's Exotic Reptiles this past weekend, although when you see this may not be this past weekend. Uh, but I went up the weekend of like August 20th and uh, we shot two videos. So this will be the first one that you're looking at now, which is gonna be his boa, boa projects that he's got going this, uh, this season. Just some of them anyway, some babies, and we'll look at some older animals as well. Uh, so definitely check it out and just stay tuned because the next video will be some of his Burmese projects as well. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So we are here with Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. You guys know him. Most of you do. If you don't, I don't know what you've been doing with your life. Right. But uh, we're going to look at some babies from his, his season this year, maybe some from last year, depending on what he pulls out here. And... We're gonna start with some boas. Yeah, we'll go. So I get some 2021 stuff from last year that's still here. Then I have some 2022 stuff. I have, it wasn't a huge boa season this year. Uh, I had a lot of berms, but boas were okay. I moved and with the move, I was still adjusting my room. Super busy, had a kid. All that stuff took precedent over doing my temperature cycles and stuff like that. But this is one of the projects I'm really excited about. It's a, uh, it's a hypo Aztec, and I'll kind of come closer to the camera. You'll come around the table for you guys. Oh, there you go. Um, so it's a hypo Aztec that is um, het for T positive albino. So Burke line T positive, uh, really cool stuff. This is also red line, so it's a really nice looking one. Uh, I have some hypo IMG Aztecs that are het for T positive. And again, I just think that Burke line T positive is somewhat of a under uh, rated and not as hyped up as some of the other T positive lines like VPI. VPI is awesome, but there are certainly some underrated, I'll call them for now, because for lack of better terms. Uh, I mean, so everybody has been focusing or a lot of people have been focused on VPI. This is a VPI Pink Panther Jungle Motley that is, this one is available on the website, but uh, really just pretty snake and the cameras don't tend to show it. No. This is why people like VPI, but they just have this really nice soft glow, almost like a marshmallow look to them, just really soft. But the Pink Panther adds these really cool uh, lateral stripes along their whole body. And as they grow, they'll just get pinker and pinker, especially these stripes. They look really awesome as adults, specifically with the Motley in it. So really cool snake. That one's like, they're not going to see my head. I'm yeah, it wants to be a ball python. <laughs> For you ball python people see bows can be ball pythons too yeah uh, and then i think things that everybody knows that i have but uh, at least if you if you've seen me are the bloods i huge in blood stuff i just think it's a really valuable combination that is not integrated in enough stuff yet so that's why i'm somewhat creating a small army of bloods because as you guys start producing hats i'm going to be able to utilize those hats into my females and males and other projects that I have. So this is just a hypo blood. Let's see if I could find a normal blood for comparison, but two hypo bloods. These are really good lines that I've been perfecting. I mean, the bellies are orange on them. And that's a cool looking snake. I think so yeah. at least. It's not everybody's cup of tea. Some people prefer albinos. That's totally fine too. I mean, that's why we have a whole bunch of different morphs and different snakes. What do we got? We got a lot of different stuff here. Let me pull out a couple IMGs. These haven't gone onto the website yet because I'm really not sure I want to sell them. Um, then we can look at my new Freedom Breeder rack because these old ones are getting a little beat. But uh, Hypo IMGs. So these are some Hypo IMGs that I'm still debating on if I want to keep them or not. But IMGs are cool morph. So people say that Hypos... Uh, are not good with IMGs, and I can somewhat agree for really dull looking IMGs, but these are babies, they've only had one shed, and they're gonna be really cool looking. Why I like IMG, the increased melanin gene, with hypo is without the hypo, they will lose all their pattern, all their color. So I like that hypo still retains some of that while getting black. So it kind of, it's I see it as a pattern enhancement, but also kind of a color enhancer, if it's done right. Uh, I don't like IMG with T negative albino. I think it's kind of a waste. People will argue me on that. Yeah. That's fine. That's like I said, it's everybody gets to keep what they like. Yeah. I don't want to argue. If that's what you want to do. That's what you can do. That's uh, that's your stuff, your priority. Come on. Arguing on the internet's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time to argue on the internet anymore. Um, I also have some really cool normals, like, or I shouldn't say normals, but like this is a 
hypo 100% het blood and sharp albino. And what I like about this, these, for some reason, they just came out really cool looking. Like the side patterns on them, they got just a, I don't know, really cool glow to them. I don't know if the camera's focusing in on that or not, but yeah, like, it's hard to pick up some of it. Yeah, I mean, I like simple stuff. This isn't necessarily simple. This could be a powerhouse really snake. Cool. Yeah, I mean, look at that tail. This could be a powerhouse snake for somebody. It's just all about how you, you kind of want to spend your money and where you want to spend it. Uh, I know that, again, if people have watched my videos, I'm a big advocate of just spending within your means. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are focused on buying the latest and greatest and they want to stretch outside their means. They're chasing a project that just is, it's just, it's, they're spending a lot of money and I, I recommend getting your footing, understand what you're breeding. If you want to spend money on it, do it, but you also have to sell those babies at some point. So this is, we just looked at some hypo bloods. This is a regular blood just to give a comparison versus I'll show a hypo blood side by side. Um, again, all these are available, but uh, really just pretty snakes. I like blood. Imagine putting this into VPI, into Pied, into, I mean, maybe not Pied yet, but eventually into really anything. I mean, even albino. This is an instance where I think an albino blood is pretty awesome snake. So that's what I'm making with these. And I haven't really, maybe I've said this in videos. I know people who've watched it has seen it. I haven't done... Uh, Call, or I had to pick between albino lines, sharp albino and call albino. And I chose sharp because I think it's a little more versatile. With call albino, your, the end game is albino blood or sun glow blood, whatever it may be. But with sharp albino, you can have uh, paradigms and paradise and all different other stuffs that work with each other. So even the hats will show visual morph patterns. I have an adult uh, paradigm Key West blood that we can maybe look at and that can show you it. Then I also work with a lot of other stuff like you guys know, it's like the, do the Dumeril's boas. Uh, I think they're just cool, cool boas. I mean, if I can get them out. <laughs> they do tend to stay buried, they're ground boas, they're small and in the wild, everything eats them. But I always wanted a Dumeril's boa and I finally got myself a couple pairs years ago and I still think they're awesome snakes. They become really good pets. They are slower growing. They still get the same size as a normal boa. There's a misconception that dumerals will stay smaller. They don't stay smaller, they just grow slower. So a lot of people who say that they stay smaller, it's only because they haven't kept them long enough to grow big, uh, or they read something on the internet. Yeah. If you want a smaller grown boa, you have stuff like this. This guy is in shed, but this is a Tarahamara boa. These are from uh, the mountains of Mexico. Uh, they are actually boa sigma or i guess reclassified as boa sigma and they are just a you know normal boa locality stuff right now or locale stuff is really peaked in price so they're not cheap but they're really unique boas where males will only get about three to four feet females will get yourself around four to five feet max so this is literally you know a cb70 ball python sized tub these could live forever in that they will never outgrow that so I think the smaller species, the trends that I'm seeing are smaller species are becoming more important, more prevalent, and the larger stuff is somewhat fading out. Obviously there's always gonna be a market for large stuff, but these dwarf boas are really starting to pick up in interest. And then- well, I think with the legal landscape too, people are moving smaller because it seems to be less regulated. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. It, it, it really is, and then uh, this is another this is another line that I've been working with. This one finally shed out. Um, this is, I call it my special line. I, I don't really have these available. Uh, I've made some available. I have a couple on my website. I just don't understand it yet. So they're, they're a little bit up there in price. They're not extreme. Um, if once I figure out what it is, I will probably up their price. These are T-positive animals, but they also make some cool stuff that if Dan has time on the video, we'll go look at some older animals to show you what they are. But uh, these are both T-positive animals. It's a different line of T-positive. They're not compatible with Burke. They're not compatible with uh, the Honduran. I don't know what line of T-positive they are. They might just be their own unique line. So I haven't bred it to every line of T-positive and I don't intend to. I'm just gonna call them my special line. I, I think that's what I'm gonna call them. And uh, just, they make really cool stuff. I'll show you kind of some of the older animals they've made. Wanna go look at some older animals? Yeah, sure. All right, so now we're gonna look at some bigger stuff. 
Dan's, you got my good angle? Yeah, well, there is All no right. good angle. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> He's harsh today. I know, and you're so nice. Uh, so that's, that's not the one I was looking for. I See, I got you all flustered now. You did. You got me blushing. It's turning me red. So the special line that I was referring to, so this is an older animal. Uh, and what that tends to do is, this I believe is what I'm going to call a super special. It tends to draw this striping. It does seem like it's incomplete dominant. Really cool sides. There's no jungle in this. Uh, and it does seem to be genetically repeatable. My problem is when I first started breeding these, I did not pay too much attention to what I was breeding. And as a result, I had a bunch of babies and I didn't know what was what. I just thought they were cool looking snakes. I didn't think it was genetic, but again, I mean, there's, if I could get this one below it, here's two animals that are clearly have the same thing going on in them. They got those side medallions. They have this cool iridescence that the camera may or may not pick up and they have this vertical striping. But I also have this whole other variant of Oh, you can't use that word. That's a trigger word. Variant. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is. That's it. You're banned from YouTube. Yeah. No more for you. you to edit that one out. That seems to, I think this is just a, maybe a super hypo special. And I want to show you the father to this one, because when you put them side by side, if you want to tell me this isn't genetic, uh, I don't know what is then. So this is the father of this animal. I mean, that's especially as babies they looked like identical to each other so those are basically identical in my opinion to each other they look very similar uh, and i think that it is it is genetic but i haven't fully come out i'm still holding back a lot of animals because i think there's two different lines that are happening one tends to throw stripes and one tends to throw spots uh, so i'm trying to kind of isolate that and really honestly the normal ones look pretty cool uh, I was going to show something else over here that I forgot what it was, but I looked at this and we might as well show a Peruvian because I got a message on my morph market this morning and said, why are these so expensive? Well, one, because I don't care if you buy them or not, but two, this is where I feel the market is for these guys. So this is a Peruvian BCC from Pacalpa, or I should say Pacalpa lineage. Uh, the lineage is what makes these animals expensive or not. A lot of times people look at wild caught Iquitos or farm bred Iquitos and think it's the same animal. Those right now are selling in the $2,000 range. This guy right here is about 4,500. They, in my opinion, are the ultimate BCC, boa constrictor constrictor. So, I mean, I don't know. It's hard not to like this. Yeah. It is hard to like the price. So it's just, it's a limited availability. There's only so many around and it's closed. You can never get more in the wild. You want to see me get bit, don't you? Just, I see Dan smiling that one, here. That one uh, looking like it wants to oblige. Yeah, and then, you know, there's other really cool stuff. Like if you're into albino stuff, these are some albino leopards that I made last oh, wow. year. These aren't for sale. I'm going to keep these so I can make more of them for you guys. Oh, it's not picking up that pink. That's too bad. Yeah, it's, isn't that badass looking? Oh, yeah. I shouldn't say that either. No, I don't care. You're going to have to, to no. edit uh, that we, out. We swear on this channel. All right, but um, yeah, I mean, just a really pretty snake. I don't know if it'll pick it up if I move away and hold it against my shirt or something, but some, sometimes the table will wash out the colors. You know, the pink is not picking up at all, but basically all through the sides, all those circles are all pink, pink, like real pink. So she has a big meal in her, so I'm gonna leave her alone for for right now, but uh, yeah, really, really pretty looking uh, albino stuff. I mean, I don't do enough albino anymore. I had a lot of albinos and if you guys followed my move, you know that a lot of the stuff uh, died in the move, which was really hard, but it, uh, it is what it is. It was my mess up. Uh, this is an adult male Tarahamara. So going back to those babies, this is what I remember wanting to show you is uh, this is a full grown adult male. He might get a little bit bigger, but that's about a three and a half to four foot snake. Uh, that's what you can expect. That's easily a manageable pet. Uh, these are also closed collection. You can't get any more of these from the wild. We can't import them, which is why they're getting very expensive. The demand for them is going up, but the supply is staying the same. Uh, I think in future years, the goal is to have more of these, but uh, for now, we'll see where it, where it takes us. And then for a full grown adult female, this is the full grown adult female here. A little bit bigger, but still super manageable. Again, when you consider that this girl is laying babies right now. Uh, I will also say that a lot of anything that I have that has blood in it is typically a dwarf species. So if you're looking for a smaller growing snake, 
a lot of my blood stuff has Central American lineage in it or, or other dwarf blood. So it's going to be smaller growing. But overall, I mean, this is a full grown adult female boa, which is extremely manageable for people who are afraid to get a boa. Uh, I think it is worth looking at maybe if you're okay with it, Dan, instead of let's maybe pull away from boa babies for a second, show some big adults and some average size adults. Yeah. That way people can get an understanding of what they're going to look like. Uh, maybe we'll just keep walking down. Okay. So average size adult boa in my collection, I should say, is... Pull this girl out. She also, I just did some feeding, so I don't want to, don't want to move them around too much. But this girl here, this is a, a fire, a, a Colombian fire, Colombian line fire. She is... Uh, breeding size now she'll get a little bit bigger but this is about the right size for you know a three to four year old I think she's a four year old female she was 2018 it's 2022 so she's about four years old at this point fire morph she'll make leucistics she is not super friendly so I'm gonna put her down before she bites me <laughs> and then we'll look at one more if we keep going down And this is a full grown adult, but I don't want to get bit while I'm trying oh, to get a big hook feeding response. You like the yeah. big, big hook? Yeah. Uh, so this is a full grown adult female boa. Uh, again, she is a blood boa. So this is an adult blood. She's not the best looking blood in my opinion. She's more of, um, you know, faded on the duller side, but really cool looking animal. And again, people who are afraid to get bow is in terms of size reference i still think this is a manageable snake uh, i don't know how everybody else feels and everybody's understanding of manageable is different this snake could easily be comfortable in a four by two by two enclosure a four by two by 18 high something like that really floor space is important as the boas get larger if you ask me would you rather floor space or height i would say floor space any day of the week specifically for boas although they'll utilize the height the only thing you need to be careful about with the height is that you can still control your temperatures so this girl here again, she's probably, I don't know, what do you think, six feet? Yeah, somewhere about that. Yeah, something like that. She's a 2012, so she's 10 years old, and she's as big as she's gonna get for the most part. She may get bigger, but she's really stopped her rapid growth phase uh, and a very manageable size. She had babies this year. Uh, I think some of the first babies we looked at were hers. Some of the first blood bows I pulled out were hers. She tends to throw really pretty orange babies. So she's the average size adult for something that has some Central American lineage and a female. Males will get a little bit smaller than this. Males tend to average around five to seven feet. Females about six <laughs> to eight. She put me in that little bin. Yeah, give me the little bin. And interestingly, a lot of snakes do better in smaller bins than larger bins. I have some snakes, I've put them in larger enclosures and I had to put them back into it because they really liked that tighter space, more confined. They tend to race around a little bit more and they'll rub their nose raw if you put them in a large cage. Want to look at some berms? Sure. 